Hey everyone, George here. Welcome back to The Art of Water. I want to talk to you a little bit about this tank uh, that we're looking at right here. Uh, this is a tank that I have featured on the channel at least one or two times in the past. Uh, basically what it is is a 7.3 or 7.8 gallon Aquatop. I don't remember specifically the size of this cube, but somewhere in there. And uh, anyways, uh, for a long time, almost a year, I had uh, a collection of different kinds of Papua New Guinea rainbow fish in this tank up until about a week ago. Uh, what happened uh, was nothing bad. The fish are all fine and doing well. A friend of mine uh, had set up a tank that was about 150 gallon, and he was looking for uh, specifically rainbow fish that he was unable to find and I had several varieties that uh, were quite appealing to him and he asked me if I would be interested in letting them go. Well, after a, a few weeks of thinking about it, I actually decided that uh, I thought those tanks uh, or his tank would be better suited for that collection since he was going to be adding several more species of rainbows from the same area. And I thought, you know, why not? Uh, let's go ahead and uh, let him have those fish. So what we basically have here is an aqua top. It's a, like I said, either a 7.3 or 7.8 gallon cube. And what I did is basically I left most of the uh, plants in here that were the low growing uh, uh, plants in the front of the tank and uh, decided to just go ahead and rescape the whole island section of this tank here and uh, really fill it in with uh, a lot of plants in the center. Uh, most of those are Anubius nana, um, several other kinds of Anubius that I don't have uh, in front of me right now, so I can't tell you exactly what they are, but they are in the Anubius family. And uh, in the back, uh, you can't see a lot of them because they're smaller, but I do have some swords growing. I have, uh, uh, I think it's an Amazonian sword back there. I have uh, some repins. I have several different kinds of uh, plants that will eventually fill out the back of this tank. Also some ferns that I transplanted from, uh, some ferns from another tank that are very small. You know how ferns uh, get these uh, growths on the tips of them and they're easy to just uh, pull off, already rooted and uh, ready to go for replanting. So that's basically what I did here. Now I've had this black betta fish here for about five months and I've always felt bad that I've only had him in a three and a half gallon tank uh, and thought, you know, I'd like to really highlight this fish. I like this guy a lot. He's a, he's a beautiful black betta and uh, I just uh, decided that uh, Darth Vader, which is his name, <laughs> needed to be in some bigger digs here. So basically, uh, after getting rid of uh, the uh, collection of rainbow fish I had in here, all of which were nano fish, I want you to understand that. I wasn't putting rainbow fish uh, that were uh, of any big size. In fact, uh, I can give you the names of several of the varieties of them. Number one, I had some uh, blue-eyed uh, rainbows, uh, which are um, yellow fin, basically a little highlights of yellow fin on them. Uh, if you go back and look at the old videos of this tank, you can see the collection that I had in here. So anyway, I just decided I wanted to uh, give Darth Vader a, uh, a nicer home and uh, I think uh, this turned out to be a good answer to that. And uh, that is basically what we ended up doing here. Now, I am not done planting this uh, cube here. I have some areas in the back behind the uh, 
main rocks that we have right in here. I have an area in the back that I would like to put uh, some more uh, uh, Anubius uh, back in there or maybe some other uh, just, uh, you know, plants that don't need to be in soil. Uh, maybe some moss up here on the end of this uh, branch that's sticking out. A couple of different ideas that I have. I'm just not done with it yet, but I wanted to get this guy in there and fill it out as best I could. And uh, in doing so, I have basically uh, got him transported over or transplanted over here from uh, his previous tank, and he's doing really, really well. He really likes it. Now, I do have a couple of uh, Siamese uh, algae eaters and uh, some snails. And uh, he's chasing those guys around a little bit. Now, the interesting thing is those same fish, which I find to be really, really good cleaner fish for keeping algae off plants and uh, tank glass and so forth. Uh, he was in a tank with those guys before, and I just never saw him chasing these guys around or, or them chasing each other. But... I think because it's a new tank and they're getting a little territorial, uh, that will all settle down within a few days. If it doesn't, then likely what I will do is trade out the uh, Chinese or Siamese uh, algae eaters and uh, maybe put some auto synclids in here instead, which are a little more uh, docile of a fish, but do a good job. Uh, I don't have algae problems, but I don't ever want those kind of things to get started. So I'm always careful about making sure I have snails, shrimp. Can't put shrimp in here, obviously, with the betta fish, but, uh, uh, you know, at least uh, try to get some things in here that are going to take care of any issues regarding algae growth that might try to try to happen in a tank and uh, in doing so uh, it always seems to work out really well for me. I've been doing this for a long time and using these same fish, these same varieties of fish. And I also have a pleco in here that uh, I uh, really like. Uh, he was in the, in the same uh, tank with the rainbows, I left him in here. Uh, there doesn't seem to be any issues between him and the betta fish, so I don't think that's gonna be a problem. I think the spines on his back there kind of prevent the betta after one time of going after him uh, from doing anything severe to him. So he seems to be getting along pretty well with that particular fish. And I think, like I said, the, the other fish that are being chased around by him, uh, either that will settle down over the next few days or we will uh, transplant them out of here and uh, think of something else to do. Anyways, I really love this tank. I think it's a nice tank for my office area here. I have about, eh, about seven tanks in this office area if I were to go around the room here. And uh, this is about the largest I have. Most of the tanks I have in here are very much nano tanks, either five gallons uh, or less. And uh, all of them have been in this area for over a year, some of them going on maybe even two years at this point. Anyways, just wanted to show you the new tank here and... Uh, get your opinion on this. Uh, I obviously have very low flow going on with this bed of fish. I know they don't like that. And uh, good filtration though. Uh, I got a three stage uh, filtration system in here. I am not running CO2. I am not uh, putting any significant kind of lights in here. I put a system in that's uh, going to handle these anubias and moderate to low light required plants very well. So no concerns with that whatsoever. And uh, again, uh, things that I have used with other tanks, I have almost 25 tanks in my house here. And uh, we will uh, continue to use things that work here. Uh, also, a new addition to this tank is some floating 
plants uh, that I put in uh, here as well that came out of his old tank and uh, I just thought uh, they made a nice touch and uh, again the more plants that you have everybody that's in the hobby that knows this the more plants you have the more competition algae has to get going in a tank and uh, we or I at least always try and I know other people that are in the hobby that know about planting tanks heavily will tell you the same thing that these uh, plants getting uh, very heavily planted in a tank uh, are always a good thing for competing with algae and keep the algae growth down to nothing if you do it right now I'm not, again I'm not running CO2 on this I do run CO2 on some of my tanks. I just don't happen to have any kind of CO2 running in the office area here. And everything that's in here is basically the same kinds of tanks where they're very moderate uh, plants uh, as far as plant uh, light requirements. And uh, uh, again, on water changes, I am very big on water changes. I know there's a lot of people out there that uh, say, I never do a water change, or I only do a water change once a month or whatever. Well, I do water changes on every established tank that I have. Uh, this tank here has been going for quite a long time here. Basically, like I said, the only thing I did is move some things around, add some plants to it, and uh, transplant the fish that were in the old tank into this one and uh, it, so it was cycled already you know, the water parameters are absolutely perfect uh, as far as uh, what we've got going on in here so uh, again the plants uh, I just think it's so important that if, if you can plant as many plants as you can afford in a tank you should do that because it's so much harder to go back and do it and you have less of a chance of algae issues going on and uh, that competition with algae all the nutrients from the plants take up all the nutrients that the algae would get and uh, it just is a better deal uh, for the uh, tank in the long run so anyways uh, right now we're we've got this running at about 7.0 on the pH uh, Everything as far as water hardness and all of that, no issues whatsoever on that. Uh, the substrate in here is fluval um, uh, stratum, I believe it is. I think that's pretty much all I use. I've got a few tanks that may have uh, some other varieties of substrate in there, but fluval stratum is always one that I choose because it's fantastic with the plants does a great job. Uh, I am putting some ferts in here um, a little bit each day uh, just because I transplanted some new plants in here and I want them to get off to a good start but uh, nothing that's uh, uh, overdoing it at all uh, so I think everything is going to grow real well stay nice and green uh, without using CO2. I, I don't like using CO2 unless I have to. Uh, on a huge tank, uh, of course, uh, I like to use the CO2 because it gets the plants off to a better start. And uh, with these nano tanks, uh, this size here, I don't ever find that it's necessary. I did run CO2 for many, many years for a long time on a lot of my nano tanks, and I just found uh, by experimenting with them that sometimes it, it just is so unnecessary to do and uh, so therefore I'm just not running CO2 on any of these tanks in this office area in my home here. So anyways uh, Darth Vader has a new home and uh, beautiful fish. I don't find black bettas uh, that are this uh, pretty uh, very often and I'm not a huge betta person. Uh, I've had bettas in the past, as you can see by some of the older videos that I have that go back a year or more. And, uh, you know, I, I still have other bettas around the house. I have bettas in uh, areas of the house where 
they get shown off a little bit better uh, with their tanks. I never ever put a bed of fish in less than three and a half gallons and I try to put them in a minimum of five if I can uh, depending on where I locate them in my home. But uh, this guy here I like him. He's in my office area. I get to see him every day and uh, enjoy him. So I decided this 7.3 gallon or 7.8 gallon whatever it happens to be cube was a perfect size for him and so he gets to move into some new digs here anyways if anybody has any questions please feel free to comment please subscribe and also hit that like button also if you're looking for any new videos that i might have coming out i've got a huge project coming up uh, as you can see from my last video the 40 gallon tank that was delivered to my home yesterday showed up damaged. So that tank is being resent to me and we're going to get started on that project probably within a couple of weeks if we get the tank in the time frame in which they have promised. Uh, unfortunately, I was ready to start working on that uh, tank right away and uh, that kind of threw my schedule off quite a bit here. So Anyways, got some nice content coming up over the next few weeks. Also, our new intro logo is coming out. We've got some giveaway things going on. If you go back and look at some of the videos that talk about that, uh, we've got some really fun things coming up and some nice giveaways. And of course, a new look to the channel with the new intro, um, the uh, logo that uh, will be coming up with all of my videos in the future. I think you're gonna like that. And uh, we took a long time to kind of work on that to make it look really cool and really interesting. And I really like the results of it. You're gonna see that probably within the next week or two on every one of my videos. And uh, we will, uh, of course, be using that as an intro on everything. And uh, like I said, really excited about that. Not in a situation where we're going to have merch yet at this point, but looking towards that down the road, uh, looking to have some nice guests on that will be uh, people that you'll probably know from the hobby all around the YouTube channel. Uh, we're going to be doing some interesting things on this 40-gallon build that I'm going to be doing in another part of my house over the next couple of months, or a couple of weeks, excuse me. Uh, we're going to have somebody really interesting on here that's going to help me with that. We're going to do a Zen type tank here that's 40 gallons and it is going to be nano fish only. And I think it's just going to be a beautiful build. I'm really excited about it. So hit subscribe, hit the like button, please leave some comments. And of course, hit that bell so that whenever we get a new video out, you're right up on what's going on and uh, uh, gives you a chance to uh, see these videos as soon as they come out. Anyways, thanks for uh, talking with me this afternoon and visiting with me. This is George with The Art of Water, and we'll talk again soon.